soils or they are the light soils, that, that method can be used under those circumstances. But we also realize that there is a situation where you have some crops which are, which are quite susceptible to decay or to injury under situations where the, the water is getting collected and standing for a long duration. So, to cater to those situations, in this method, these methods are old, age old methods. We are trying to peep into what would have been the, the way the, the, these methods have came into existence. So, for uh, catering to those type of situations, it could have been felt that, let us think of some ways and means by which we can we can ensure that the water is not made to stand over the surface of the, the soil, but it can be still made available through the lateral, um, lateral movement because the water which is made available in the soil, as we have seen that the deficit in the soil will ensure that the water moves from the, the with respect to the gradient the potential which is available in the soil, the water will move from a wetter area to a drier area. So that uh, situation can be, it can be made use of, and that is what is exactly happening in the case of our irrigation method. You construct the furrows, let me plot a can be different shapes of these furrows, not necessarily that it has to be like this only, it can be, there can be another uh, situation where you have another uh, type of cross section, you might have something like this. <coughs> and these furrows, the water is what is made available in these channels. These are the cross section, the, the thing which I have plotted here, there is the cross section view of these furrows. So, if I make the water available in this, in these channels, these channels are the channels which are created, then the tendency of this water will be to move in the lateral direction. So, the water can be spread in the lateral direction as well as they can be spread in the vertical direction. This movement of uh, moisture from these channels 
into these areas will make this soil wet. And then the plants can be grown in these uh, areas. So you can have the plants which can be grown in this on these uh, ridges. <coughs> now this area is getting water not in the same manner as it was getting in the case of basin and the border irrigation situation. This water is obtained, this soil will, the moisture level of the soil will increase because of the water available in this channel, the adjoining channel and the movement of this moisture in the lateral direction. That is the basic difference in the, the this method and the previous two methods which we have uh, considered that in those methods the movement of the moisture is in the vertical direction because of the fact that the water is moving over those the fields in the form of a sheet of uh, water, whereas in this case the water is made to move in these channels and from these channels the water moves in these areas which are drier areas in the lateral direction as well as there will be some movement of moisture in the, the vertical direction also and the crop will be getting the moisture from this zone. This will give opportunity for the crop to have a better irrigation. There would not be any stage where the water will be choking the, the total uh, soil. The soil will always be having in the pores a lot of air available. So all those crops which are which were susceptible to the inundation of water in terms of their uh, growth, in terms of their quality of uh, yield which they, they can give, all those crops now can be catered to using this specific method. So now if you, uh, uh, let me also tell that the, the spacing between this, now in the design which ultimately will be going in for, what will be the various aspects of design? The aspects of design will be what should be the size of uh, these channels? Or the size of these furrows? The spacing between the two adjoining furrows? That spacing will decide how much is the area available uh, on the ridge. So, depending on that, you might be in a position to even have, in some cases, two rows of the crops instead of one. All these things, there are uh, many other uh, features which will decide whether you should have two rows because it is also a function of what type of crop, which crop is going to be grown here, what will be their requirement, what type of soil you are having, because the, if you have the spacing between these two channels is too wide. Now, if that happens, let me see that you have a situation where you have uh, uh, you have created something like this. Now the spacing in the, the two channels is too wide. Now it might be difficult in this situation for the moisture to move in the lateral direction to an extent, at least if you provide the water in both these channels, at least the moisture from the sun should be able to reach up to this level. From this channel it should be able to reach up to this level. And that will be a function of what is the what are the characteristics of the soil? We have seen that uh, the, the texture as well as uh, the structure will decide how much, what can be the possible movement of uh, 
moisture and that is going to be the deciding factor in finding out how much is the possible uh, spacing which you can provide. At the same time, the other uh, parameters will be the size of the stream size again, what stream size should be made to pass through the channels, that will be a function of again what is the infiltration capacity characteristics of the, the soil, what is the gradient available, how much uh, opportunity time is required and all those things, the, the, the characteristics of those design parameters will remain similar but they will be subject to some of these constraints which we are looking at. Having understood this, now let us try to uh, enumerate uh, the suitability conditions under which this method can be suitable. Now we have already uh, mentioned most of those things. First thing is that you can use this for row crops. You can use this method for those crops which are sensitive. where uh, you have to, uh, in some cases, if you if you don't use this method, then it might be having the standing water available for a longer period, and then because of that standing water, it might influence the yield of the crop. This can be used for from the soil concentration, the medium to moderately fine soils. These soils will normally have uh, quite, in comparison, relatively they will be having high holding capacity, the moisture holding capacity is much higher in these uh, soils. So these soils, wherever you have these soils, we have seen that the, the methods like border irrigation method was not a very suitable method under these circumstances and uh, though the check basin method was quite suitable, but then in that case you are having smaller areas, you are having smaller fields where uh, you are uh, making the water stand for a longer period for letting the water penetrate into the soil through infiltration. Whereas in this case, if you have such a situation that your crops are not suitable to that, those uh, environments which you are creating by adopting the basin method, then you should use this method for those similar soils. There are some situations where you have uh, the problem of crust formation. So if crust formation, crust formation is in some soils, if the water is standing for some period, when it dries up, then the, the top soil will be, you will have the crust formation, it will uh, have a tendency to just uh, hold together and uh, um, there will be cracks on the soil and it will have a tendency to just uh, uh, break up in the form of uh, thick cakes. So that crust uh, formation is quite bad uh, if, it is, if it is being formed in the areas because that, will, that might influence the, the later on infiltration. So for those soils, this method can be used because when, when you are uh, wetting the partial area, in this case, this is the only method of surface irrigation. 
he was utilizing the the gravitational flow where you are not wetting the whole soil you are wetting part of the soil so from that angle the crust formation uh, problem can be tackled by using this method then this is also suitable where uh, you have problem of uh, surface drainage now in some situations if the if the area is having lot of rainfall the natural rainfall occurs quite frequently and with the conventional methods with the other uh, methods which we have discussed so far the basin as well as the water irrigation methods using those layouts you might find it relatively difficult to drain the whole area of that water which is accumulating because of the rainfall the excess rainfall whereas in this method the drainage the natural drainage will be very fast all that water which is being collected it has a tendency to drain off the area in a much uh, uh, better manner than with the previous two methods now here again uh, as it may not be so in all the layouts we are going to discuss the various layouts which are possible under the the furrow irrigation method but if you have a area which is flat area which is not having any grade which is not having any slope then there won't be any difference much difference in the two even in this situation then the drainage might not be very very fast and very good whereas if you have the slight grade then this method uh, the furrow uh, the way you have constructed those channels those channels will help in draining of the the area very fast but there has to be some grade some uh, minimum grade which will en ensure that the water is not standing uh, there for a longer period it should be drained off the the surface <coughs> so in general the surface drainage facilities uh, naturally are much better when you go in for the furrow irrigation system in terms of uh, the limitations what are the various limitations which might be encountered the limitation of erosion hazard the erosion hazard will be of the same uh, uh, order of magnitude because it's a function of the slopes so in this method also if the slopes the slopes become very steep steep then in that case the erosion problems can be uh, faced and you your design will be constrained with respect to the erosion problems those limitations are the same as we have in the case of uh, the previous two methods let's look in terms of the labor the labor requirements they are high in comparison to the previous two methods which we have looked at because in this case one is that you have to uh, ensure that the grades are quite proper because in each individual channel how the water moves that is going to decide how much water will be penetrating into the the beds of those uh, furrows so you have to take care of each individual channel and moreover the water is also being supplied to each individual channel whereas in the previous case you were supplying the water in the in a sheet to the whole area so that way the simply the application uh, requirement the labor uh, requirement from the application point of view is also going to be more in comparison to the previous two methods the 
the line grading also um, is going to be much better than the other two methods. The grades in the furrows, they should be quite uh, uh, uniform so that you can, the lengths which uh, you are selecting for the furrows, they have to be, they, they can only be the relevant lengths, the design lengths which we have uh, come out with through the design methods, those can only be applicable if the grades are proper throughout the length. Otherwise, if the grade is not proper, in the other case, maybe that if the grade was not uh, proper in the case of border, it might create a hump where you don't have a patch where uh, you don't have the water reaching only at one point. Or if there is a low depression, you might get excess water. Whereas in this case, if the, the grade is not proper, if the grade is uh, uh, not maintained, it might not, the water might not reach in the remaining part of the furrow. So, uh, though you are uh, handling each individual channel separately, but at the same time, that channel is providing uh, water to the total, maybe a couple of rows on both sides of the channel. It will have uh, its own repercussions if the grades are not given properly and uh, you have to look at those requirements very closely. Then let us look at the various layouts which are, I just mentioned that under various different conditions, under different situations, you might feel like adopting different layouts. So, what are the various layouts possible? Before we go in for the layouts, let us uh, let's try to look at that, what they depend on. Why you require these layouts? Why you require different formations of these uh, furrows? They are basically influenced by topography, soil type and crop type. These are the three major factors which will influence, which will dictate that which layout is, is uh, better than the other layout. In some cases, if the, topo, if the existing topography is such that you do not want to unnecessarily spend money on changing the layout. If the topography is such that you can utilize the existing layout or the existing uh, slopes, the prevailing slopes, then I think there is nothing uh, like that because by that, by doing that, you are saving a lot of effort, unnecessary effort. You are also ensuring that the soil is not disturbed because in these uh, land forming processes, it will take a lot of time for the soil to replenish its fertility. If the soil is disturbed, if the top soil has been replaced by the, the soil which is uh, from the lower horizons or the lower layers, that those layer, lower layers uh, uh, are not as fertile as the top layer was, as we had discussed earlier also. Whenever you go in for uh, um, land forming, you are cutting the soil from some area and dumping it onto the other area. So, at both the places, let me make this point clear. We had discussed that if we have, this is the the layout, the existing layout, you want to give a grade, you want to give a grade in such a manner that this is the grade which you want to get, this is the slope which you want to get, the uniform slope 
in this area. So what you can do is that you can remove this soil from the top, dump it on this because this is the filling area where you want to do some filling. This is the area from where you want to cut. This is also the area from for cutting. You remove these soils and keep on dumping on this. So after some time, you will find that to reach this grade, you have removed the soil from this zone, which is the last strip, and that has come on the top of this. Now, this is the most inf infertile soil, which belong, belong to a, a lower depth that has been put here. So the existing soil which was fertile in this part, the existing soil which was fertile in this top part, both have been dumped onto this area. Here you have exposed the lower soil, here you have dumped onto the, the fertile soil. At both the places you have problem. So whenever you go in for any such land farming uh, uh, procedure, you are indulging in this process. That, if possible, it should be avoided because that is also you know, from the angle of uh, soil fertility. It is very important. And if you cannot avoid that, then uh, there is no other way because you want to get this grid to ensure that your applications, the water application efficiencies and those other related things, they can be enhanced. You can have better management of the, uh, the distribution of water. But the first priority is to be given to anything which can be done using the same existing topography. So if the undulation is not very excessive, if you can use some method by which you can uh, avoid any, any alteration in the, the land uh, uh, topography, you can you should uh, use appropriate method. So there are some furrow layouts which use the, the topography in the same form in which it is available on that location. Then the soil type, again uh, depending on the soil type, depending on the variation of soil type, if you have soils which are having very low infiltration uh, capacities, you will have to make a layout which is having a very minimal grade or even a flat. You, you, you should lay the furrows in such a manner that they are almost on the flat land. There is no grade given to that. So that you can let the water be blocked into this, the total length of the furrow. You will fill the furrow block the water and let it infiltrate, taking the long period which it requires because the soils are very really fine soils. So from that angle, you will then lay the furrow in, in that uh, manner. Now this soil type can also dictate how the furrows should be laid. The crop type, this parameter can also be, sometimes they can uh, influence the, the layout of the, as I had discussed that in some cases, if the crop is such that you can uh, have close spacing between the two plants or more than two plants, then you will try to, try to uh, keep the spacing between the furrows with a higher, uh, uh, towards the higher side so that you can have more than three rows or uh, more than two rows of the same crops. The crop can sometimes, or in some cases, the crop is such that it, it can be best grown if there is only a single row and there is a spacing between those two rows. Then in that case, you can have the furrows laid in such a manner that you should have only the minimum spacing between the two furrows. And there will be only one plant put on each ridge or the, the bed of the the, the, the crown part of the furrow. All those uh, parameters put together
error, will decide what should be the appropriate, appropriate, most appropriate layout of uh, furrows in a particular area. What these layouts can be? Now let's have a look at the common layouts. There can be many. There is no end to that because at different location you might find that uh, there is there is one which can be most appropriate. But some of them are the ones which have uh, known to be the common layouts which are being experienced, which are being used by the farmers in general. These are the graded graded furrows. Then you have level furrows. You have contour furrows. So these three are the most common layouts. As the name suggests, the graded furrows are those which have a longitudinal slope. slope. These will have a longitudinal slope. In this case, the soil type, since you are giving a grade to the, the furrow, you will have uh, those soils, these will be suitable to those soils which are moderately, having moderate uh, infiltration rates. So in that case, you will be in a position to get some water infiltrated um, from the channels into the lateral areas, even though the slope is there. They will be they can be open ended. Open ended means that uh, you are not having a, a blockage in the uh, downstream side. You let the water flow continuously, but for that you have to have a very proper grade. You cannot, you cannot go in for open-ended uh, furrows if the grade is not proper. So for those areas where, the, where uh, you want to use the open-ended furrows, the length again, the length, how much length you can go in for is a function of the grade, is a function of the soil type, is a function of what is the, uh, the stream size which you are using. And those are the features which we will uh, look at when we will go in for the design. Because the design is nothing but the combination of these parameters. That if you have these parameters, for example, uh, stream size is something which may or may not be in your control. As a farmer, in uh, our situation in India, a farmer will be getting a stream size, which is the prevailing stream size which is being made available by the irrigation department or uh, by the, that specific project, what is the stream size available? And this stream size, he might not have any control on. If he wants a bigger stream size, he might not be able to get that stream size unless he has the water availability is within his control. He has a, a tube well which the size, the capacity of that tube well, if that can be weighed, and if he can, uh, the maximum capacity, if it is known, and that is the maximum level of uh, stream size he can choose. Below that, he can always choose that stream size by diverting the, the water into two different uh, streams. So he can reduce the stream size provided he has the, the uh, control over the maximum available. Similarly, there are 
or some other uh, situations where some of the things might not be under his control. So, if the stream size becomes a fixed thing, then the remaining components of designs are that if the stream size is fixed, knowing the type of soils, he might have to find out how much is the length of the, the furrow he can go in for. And that also will be influenced by that, what type of crop he is using. He might have to, uh, he might like to know that what the spacing between the two furrows, which will uh, give him the best results. He might be interested in uh, knowing uh, what should be the best grade to be provided, because if he wants to go in for the grading of the area, what slope should be given. So, in case the slope is a prevailing slope, he wants to use the prevailing slope, then the design will be having a constraint on the slope also. So, the slope is fixed, the stream size is fixed, He'll, he can only play with the size uh, of the, or the length of the furrow and the spacing between the furrows. So, that way there are different combinations, even in the case of designs, there is no fixed thing, it is always subject to what are the constraints available under the specific circumstances. Now, the level furrows, uh, let me first show you the the graded furrows. This is a, a picture of uh, the furrows. In this case, you might not be able to make out uh, very much whether is the grade is there or not. So, this picture may be of a level furrow or graded furrow, but this is how they have been put. These are the channels which are where the water is uh, to be made available and these are the, the ridges where the, the crop will be uh, growing. Okay. This is the this is what I had shown, I had only shown the, the sectional view of this. So, in general, this, these will be the, the length of this as going um, in this direction and the water is to be made available. This is the supply ditch. The water can be made available from this ditch into each of the individual furrow. In the case of the level furrows, these are the furrows where are, there is no longitudinal slope. The grade is 0. You do not have any, is practically level furrows. And they will be normally close ended. So that you can check the water once the the furrow, the total length is filled with water. Since the water will take long time to infiltrate, you give that opportunity by blocking the water and letting it stay uh, within that channel. That opportunity time will ensure that there is a lot of movement, little movement of water from the channel into the soil. And uh, uh, for that purpose, since the soils are fine soils, the rate of infiltrations are very low, you make this provision to uh, have the level furrows. Then the contour furrows are those furrows where you are making use of the, the natural topography and you lay, the con you lay the furrows along the contours. But at the same time, you give slight grade in the longitudinal direction of the furrows, so that the water can move from the upstream end to the downstream end. Let us see a, a picture of uh, this contour furrow. You can see here that is using the natural um, topography of the area 
and in this in these situations the topography has to be very 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 uh, mild mildly undulating uh, topography you cannot use it on highly undulating uh, topographic areas so if there is very mild um, natural slopes you can avoid doing any land forming on that by going along the along the uh, contours and laying your furrows along the contours at the same time giving slight grade that means you might not be going uh, exactly along the the contours you'll be slightly going away also so that you can get the grade the desired grade so you'll be going while going in the longitudinal direction you'll be slightly going to the lower part of the the contour so that that uh, grade is can be obtained again the the level of grade which is required will be a function of the soil type how much infiltration rate is desirable and uh, that can be obtained that is what the contour uh, for irrigation system looks like and there you can uh, the main uh, main idea is the main advantage is that you can try to make use of the natural topography thereby reducing the chances of losing the fertile area and also avoiding the the unnecessary labor or the infrastructural uh, uh, or the land farming expenses which have to be made if you have to go in for the the grade uh, to be to be uh, required in the graded furrows or even in the case of level furrows with that uh, i have given you enough idea about what the what we do in the case of furrow irrigation but there is one there is one class of uh, furrow irrigation which is sometime put to use and is known as corrugations these corrugations are nothing but they are the furrows of smaller size the cross section area of these furrows is very small in comparison and this is a a picture of that in which you have these these corrugations which are nothing but they are small furrows and they are spaced quite far apart where uh, where do you use these corrugations in some situations you will find that either the the crops which you want to grow using the furrow method they are close growing crops so you want a wider bed where you can grow the crop instead of having row crops you want to use it for the close growing crops then you go in for corrugations or sometimes where you feel that the amount of water availability is very small is quite scarce but at the same time you can your soils are such that you can cover a wider area the soil can penetrate in the later direction up to a, a wider uh, spacing then you can use this uh, corrugation method in some cases when the soil salinity is a problem the the water which you are using is creating a lot of salinity problems again the uh, the corrugation method can be quite handy because by by doing that you can uh, reduce the quantity of water to be used and in some uh, situations you are also calling them um is not the nomenclature uh, remains same basically there is a, there is a way in uh, the, the other uh, um, 
the furrow irrigation uh, methods. There are sometimes situations where you do not supply the water in every channel in all the irrigations. You supply the water in alternate channels. So, example, what I am trying to say is that because when I mentioned about the salinity problem, that salinity problem can also be tackled in some situations by ensuring that if these are the channels in the normal uh, uh, for irrigation method, you are supplying water to this channel in one irrigation. In the next irrigation, you do not supply water in this channel, you supply the water in the, the other channels which were, uh, which were not supplied earlier. So, once the water is moving from this end to this side and the other irrigation is moving from this side to this side. So that can also be, is also one way of uh, managing your uh, resource in such a way. It can be used when the water is scarce, you do not want to, but at the same time you have to look at is it sufficiently satisfying the requirement of the crop, how much is the deficit which is still remaining. So, all those things can be looked into. But this, this way of uh, supplying water is called alternate method. And the corrugation, the order of magnitude of these uh, corrugation, the size can be, uh, you can get an order of magnitude uh, feeling about the size is 6 centimeters bottom width Ten to fifteen centimeters depth, of these furrows or the corrugation which you use, and the side slopes can be one is to one, uh, which you normally use in the case of corrugations. So, with that, uh, I think we will we'll conclude the topic on furrow irrigation, what the furrows are, what the furrow irrigation, irrigation method uh, involves into and we will deal with the remaining two methods which are not very common methods, but at some in some situations they are uh, being used which is the the contour levy or the contour ditch method, uh, we will discuss them and then we will go on to the other uh, methods of irrigation which are uh, the two classes, one is the subsurface irrigation and the pressurized irrigation methods. Any question at this stage? Okay, thank you. Then.